Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Did you know Hikite is not for power generation? Yeah, I know, I know. Many of you have learned to chamber your fist to pull back your arm while punching with the opposite arm for the purpose of power generation. This is however not the main use for Hikite. There are a few reasons why Hikite without context is not the ideal thing to do while punching. Now, first of all, pulling your hand away exposes your body to a counter strike. Secondly, it slows down consecutive strikes because your hand needs to travel a longer distance. Thirdly, it's just a wasted effort when you're not doing anything with the Hikite. So why do karate practitioners from most styles make such an effort to learn and teach Hikite in all their Kata, Kihon and Kumite? The answer is twofold. There is the group of karateka that still believe it is for power generation. Now, if you are part of this group, press pause, take a breath and press play again. Hikite does not generate power. I could explain why it doesn't, but Ian Abernethy already did this several times actually, much better than I could. It's massively misunderstood. It shouldn't be. There's no excuse for it to be. The, what Hikate is for is very clear from the point of view of physics, biomechanics, tactics. Historically, it's very clear what Hikate is for. Nothing to do with power generation, okay? Now, the second part of the reason why we uh, Hikite has more to do with the idea that karate-based self-defense highly focuses on single actions with several purposes. Our techniques should, at the same time, protect us, injure the opponent, improve our position, and worsen the opponent's position. So, for example, someone punches you, you parry the incoming punch, grab the opponent's wrist, and pull it back to you. This forces the opponent to be pulled in closer, after which you crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and they hear the lamentation of their women. Ah, right, you are Conan. I have another theory about this that's worth thinking about. The far pullback hikite we see in many of our techniques could be an exaggeration caused by the fact that karate used to be taught to large groups. Here, theater rules are followed, meaning movements are greatly enlarged so everybody in the audience could see exactly what the teachers were doing. This also means that today, where everything can be filmed and watched and rewatched and rewatched and rewatched at our own leisure, the far pullback hikite may need to be retired. I'm sure we won't be putting this discussion to rest anytime soon, but I thought I'd give my take on it. In short, without context, I mean without pressure training, karate is of little use to defend yourself. This is true for most aspects of it, so if one of your goals as a karateka is to learn self-defense, you should always try to put your techniques to the test. You can test it out in the streets, but I would recommend you first test it out in your dojo, in a controlled, safe environment. Although pressure training, training with an opponent who just pretends to be unwilling, is still not realistic, it is one of the best ways to approach the real thing, short of, I don't know, actually going out into an unsafe neighborhood and wait for someone to attack you or provoke someone. Don't do that. Next week, we'll go even deeper into the use of karate for self-defense. So what do you guys think? Where does everyone stand when it comes to Hikite? Let me know in the comment section and make sure to subscribe, like and share. For now, let me wish you a great day. And as always, thanks for watching.